What is up everybody, Steve here. I hope you are doing well. Today I have Travis from Real Estate Mindset. We're gonna talk details of foreclosures. We're gonna talk some personal details so you do not wanna miss this. Travis, are you here? Steve, I am here, brother. Thank you for allowing me on your show again. And I'm really looking forward to talking to you, brother. For sure, man. I appreciate you coming on. Um, let's just jump into this before we go into some other content that I think people are going to find value. But um, real quick, if you guys have not subscribed or checked out Travis's uh, YouTube channel, it's Real Estate Mindset. He is on top of it with all the stats and all the everything pertaining to real estate in terms of making a good decision, whether you're investing or buying real estate. So uh, Travis will actually jump into the real estate mindset here and take a look at it. But Travis, we got some updated information on foreclosures. Can you uh, go ahead and fulfill or fill us in on uh, what kind of information you have pertaining to this? Yeah. So, um, you know, last time we were talking, we went over May's data on foreclosures from Black Knight. Here's the updated June data. Um, obviously, every single thing is worse, right? Delinquency rates are up. Uh, normal delinquency is 30 days. 90 days are up as well. Past dues up. Foreclosure starts are up. I mean, everything is pointing to, you know, in my opinion, Steve, everything is pointing to the direction like we've been saying, you know, essentially people have been floating uh, foreclosures for I don't know how long with stimulus, with bans on, you know, not being able to foreclose. So, you know, I think it's a huge problem brewing. I think it's not going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're not going to have an inventory or we're not going to have this huge problem tomorrow, but I certainly see it brewing. Right. And, but not only that, Steve, you know, all of the reports that we hear about how good from the federal reserve about how good families are, they're only saying that because it appears they're in good shape because of the equity growth, right? The actual savings, the liquidity families are going broke within one year. They have essentially on average lost half of their savings. Right. Yeah. So, so go ahead. Sorry. So let me let me ask you because you're you're making a, a valid valid point because I've been trying to convey that on this channel of our economy is not very healthy and the average yeah. American is is not very healthy economically or financially either. So you know there's a lot of people saying that the the average Americans got a significant savings, they yeah. have significant money in their checking account. But you're obviously saying opposite as well as I am. How, how are you coming up with the data for that? Well, I, I use a lot of my data, man, from Fred Economic Data. I, I lean on them a lot more because it's not like Zillow or Redfin that they have. They clearly have a financial interest in the market. So, um, you know, even though Fred does because it's Freddie Mac, right? Massive, massive company. But I, you know, and I'm going to try to pull up the graph right now and I'll show you. Um right here. You may have to edit this out because I suck right now. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So I'm going to bring up this chart, Steve, and this is really where I'm getting this from. Now, this is the personal savings rate of Americans. Okay. This is the five-year graph. And I just really want to point out that pre-pandemic, we're about 7.6 months of savings, six, six to seven months of savings, the lowest being in the last five years. In the last five years, 6.6. .6, okay. If we fast forward to right now, we are at the lowest amount of savings for American households than we have been in a minimum of five years. So just in one year, right? Actually, you know, or from March 2021 to June of 2022, I mean, massive, right? Massive difference in savings. And, um, you know, the reality is, I believe that, you know, right now, it's never been more important, Steve, to really put the data in perspective. A lot of people are twisting the data. A lot of people are saying, don't look at this, look at that. But the reality is we've never been through this before. We, we essentially have a bubble and we have a recession, yet we have trillions of dollars that are still pumped into our economy. So that all of that stimulus money is messing up the data. The reality is, is people are absolutely suffering the massive drop in savings rate. People are, are holding on to the narrative that Americans are in great shape. And, and, and that's because of their wealth. They're looking at wealth and included in the wealth is the equity from the house. And, and you know, as well as I, you know, equity in your home is not liquidity right? You have to sell your house in order to cash in. And right now, especially you can't just sell your house, right? You know, in my local market, at least a lot of people are having to go under market value. You have to pay closing costs, taxes, realtor fees up to like 6%. It's insane. So, 
you know, I think that we what we really need to do is is look at the actual money saved liquidity and actually the debt. And both of those things are going in the direction that we're, we're in big trouble. And look, if, if you're I completely agree, if you're a complete outsider and you're looking at that chart and you're yeah. like, well, yeah. damn, like all of a sudden people have, you know, 20 something months of, uh, you know, reserves in their their savings accounts. Like, how did that? How did that get there and what, what did they do? I mean, it's what Travis is saying. Trillions of dollars were not only pumped into the system, but we had a system of you didn't have to pay your rent. You didn't have to pay your mortgage. You didn't have to pay your student debt. You still don't have to pay your student debt. Uh, Travis made a good point on another call that we made that, you know, you weren't you weren't traveling. You weren't bringing your kids to school. I mean, there's so many factors that built up those bank accounts and in a short period of time, it's plummeted. Yeah. And it, okay. can, can I show you, Steve, too? Like I, I pulled up, I pulled up this graph. Take a look at this, man. And here's the here's the chart that, that a lot of people are holding on to. And I believe it, including the Federal Reserve, because you hear it all the time. Oh, Americans are in way better shape. And I believe they are versus 2008. But I also think that this data is so tainted. Where the heck do you look? Now, look at the, I, I just showed you you know, actual savings is depleted. It's, it's yep. really, really low. Lowest has been in five years, but look at this chart. This is household net worth, right? If you look at this chart, we're, we're in better shape than we've been in five years, right? Here's all pre pandemic. Look at, look at the wealth. Now the household wealth, right? It's, it's skyrocketing up. So I believe what's happening and this is lagging data. This is only going to Q1. So this is all lagging, but nevertheless, a lot of people are looking at this and saying, Hey, the consumer's in good shape. Right. But, the, but but what I'm saying is, is they can't cash in on this equity. Right. This is overvaluation uh, based on a lot of it based on equity and on home prices. So on one hand, we have this chart here, which I believe is more realistic, massive plummet in actual liquidity savings. Right. This is personal savings. Right. And then this other one here completely you know, paints a different picture. So, you know, in order to really understand the problem that we're in, you know, I, I think that not only do you have to look at the data, you, ha you also have to be logical, right? And we have to also understand that, you know, as a result of all the trillions of dollars that were pumped in, this data is going to look crazy, right? It, it is going to look crazy, but I can tell you for sure, as someone that has boots on the ground in real estate, people are suffering. That's a yep. fact, right? We have, we have, what was inflation came out at 8.5 CPI, but Dude, we're, we're struggling. The foreclosure crisis is only going to get worse. It's probably going to add, you know, a lot more inventory per se, in, in my opinion, in, in 2023, because the process is long and drawn out. And, you know, going back to that one chart, you know, we're talking, you know, where, where is this, where is this wealth coming from? And it's primarily people's homes and um, which was artificially, I, you know, I call it artificial appreciation because it was all propped up. And uh, what's happening right now is, and you know this as a, a real estate agent and a mortgage broker, people are taking advantage of HELOC loans. And uh, Travis and I talked about this in a previous uh, conversation on his channel. Be sure you check out that video as well, where we're talking about the amount of people that, uh, or, or lending institutions, they're, they're not getting any kind of refinances going on right now because of rates. Uh, they're not getting as many new loan originations, but the only way for these uh, institutions to stay in the business is to lend money. So what are they doing? They're doing HELOC loans and people are taking that money out of their house. And um, some people are utilizing that money just to live on. They're, they're financing basically their cost of living. And then other people are just being ridiculous with that money and they're you know buying cars or improving their properties that they're living in or dropping a pool in. And then you might have a small percentage of more savvy investors that know what to do with the money and, and utilize that leverage to buy more real estate. But um, I, I think that people are, are putting themselves further and further into a bad situation. What, what do you say on that? So, you know, understand that, you know, I'm usually Steve, you know, I'm giving my forecasting and my, uh, uh, you know, thoughts and opinions to normal Americans that are want to buy a house, right? It's not really for these super savvy, well uh, in position, uh, you know, big time investors. So in my overall opinion, you should not use your home as an ATM machine. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, I saw it happen back in 2002 to 2008. People were refinancing, some of them within twice in one year. And the problem with doing that massive fees, right? It, it costs a lot of money. And back then they had prepayment penalties that were two, 3% of their loan amount. So um, you don't want to use your home as an ATM machine. If you're struggling right now, it's probably going to get worse. School loans haven't even started. My suggestion would be to sell your house. Sell your house a little bit under market value because it, depending on your local market, some local markets are going crazy. Most of them are cooling down. My own local market is amazing here in Houston. I'm seeing so many changes, but um, you know, you're going to want to sell your house before getting in more debt. In my opinion, you know, downsize into a smaller rental, you know, uh, fix the challenges in your life versus, you know, getting a HELOC uh, and prolonging, you know, what's going to happen anyways. And the thing is, is you don't want to foreclosure. If you get a foreclosure, you're, you're basically done for 10 years. Right. Yeah. And that's what happened yeah, to me, man. And it, it was so frustrating, Steve, because I had so much intelligence, I had so much savvy. The first home that I invested, I, 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 that I flipped was I was 20 years old. So the first house I flipped, I couldn't even legally drink alcohol. I was drinking back then, <laughs> but I, you know, you know, so I had all this savvy, you know, I, I had all these plans and because of one bad decision, which led to many actually, um, I lost everything foreclosure happened and dude, I was out for, for actually 13 years because of statute of limitations, uh, for my bankruptcy extended the lien collection process from the IRS, which gave me a, an additional lien because of the deficiency on my foreclosure. So the lender that foreclosed on me said, Hey, we didn't get $200,000 back. We're going to show it as Travis's income. IRS gets that and say, Hey, this is your income pay up. Right. So, um, Bro. So that's a that's a back thirteen years. Yeah, man. So what what are you doing today? It, it, you know, for anybody that's watching right now, what is, what's Travis doing today to to better their financial picture, to better their uh, housing picture, and everything else? What what's your strategy today, and what you're doing? So, man, you know. I've only been doing YouTube kind of full time ish for six months, right? So I'm still, you know, I'm still learning about my subscribers. I'm still learning how they need help. But dude, I've already seen, you know, in my comment section, people like Travis, thank you so much. Back in, you know, March when you said stop, don't buy, we waited. The same house we're looking at is now eighty thousand dollars lower. Is sixty thousand lower, fifty thousand lower. So I get so many comments now that people that have been watching my channel and I've been sounding the alarm. They've waited, right? And because of their local market, local markets change. And I'm going to get into that, but I'm, I'm hearing it, right? So if you waited, if you listen to me, you're all in most metro areas, you're seeing not small price cuts. I'm talking massive price cuts. So I see that already. But my opinion, Steve, is if you're a homeowner right now, if you're on the sidelines, if you're waiting, you're frustrated, the number one thing other than being happy, loving your family, right? Praying, whatever, that's my thing. Tithing, so you're not bound to money. I won't even go there. That's what I do because I lost everything in 2008. So it changed my whole life and concept of how to live. But um, what you need to do, the most important, sorry, see, the most important thing is you have to educate yourself on your local market trends. Because yeah. if, you, if, if you don't do that, you're not going to know what a good deal is. And, and I'm at the point where I can't trust all realtors, right? I know some really good ones that I do trust, but I'm playing the odds here. And you have to understand what a good deal is. In order to do that, my suggestion is make a buying checklist, right? How much square footage do you want? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Okay. And then once you've done that, put what those houses are going for on average a square foot. Now that's going to vary because different subdivisions, different values per square foot and, and square footage is not how you come up with value. Okay. I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying the technique you should use. So you should have your buying checklist. And then once you start, once you find those houses on the market, make a note of what they're selling for per square foot. And then you sit back and you watch the price per square foot go down. Once you start seeing it go down and once you have an anchor point of about a price point for the house that you want, you're now able to understand is the house, is my local house market going down in value? Is it going up in value? Is it going the same? But the most important thing is, is what does a good deal look like to me? And what I'm saying, Steve, is even when all of the check boxes are, you know, to your buying checklist are checked off, even then you need to wait if you can. Now, I've said on my channel that I'm going to start the process in November, right? And that means pre-qualification, getting all my paperwork together with a buying target in February. But what's really important, the reason I'm saying that is because I understand my local market. 
and my personal local market, I am getting so many, so much inventory, right? I'm in triple digit inventory growth, right? Everything has price cuts. New builders, and I'm going to do a video later today, are, are especially Lennar. Bro, I'm seeing I'm seeing 11% price breaks. I need 15% yeah. from peak. I'm already seeing 11%. So yeah. it's very important that people understand what I'm saying. And I'm taking that action because of my own personal house and market, right? Now, having said that, if I find a deal I can't pass up, I'm going to get it, right? Or if in February I cannot find the deal of my dreams, I'll push it out. But this is this is my target. And, and the reason why is, is I want to wait after midterms. And it's not because I'm worried about who's elected, right? I understand after they're elected, then they can change laws. But the reason I'm saying after midterm is, is because of the circus show that goes on during the election process. I'm freaked out. You call me conspiracy theory. You can say whatever you want, but I don't want to buy a house during the circus show. I would yeah. rather get through that circus show, get the elected officials in, and then let's watch the housing market fall apart. Right. Because yeah. we have another two years before the next election. And that's my process, man. And I'm also telling people, Steve, and, and, and listen to me very, you know, I hope everyone listens. you know, the specificity here is crazy. Um, I think we're going to have a crash. I think we're going to have lots of equity. But I think what, what may happen is, is we're going to have a sharp drop. Right. And after the sharp drop, either what's going to happen is um, the, the Fed will reverse. It'll bring some demand back into the market. We'll kind of be in a similar situation we were pre-pandemic. Or what will happen is, is the real estate and housing market will continue to bleed out for a decade, for five, six, seven years before people start getting normal equity growth. And my goal is, is I don't care about um, a slow bleed. I don't care necessarily if the demand comes back. I just want to find a house that I love at a reasonable price. I'm not trying to time the bottom of the market. Um, yeah. And I'm also afraid that in, in 2024, because of the election, that's when the federal reserve is going to pivot. Right. And, and we might not, we might not have the same buying opportunities in 2024 as we had, it, as, as we possibly have in 2023. So I'm yelling at people, brother, empower yourself. So your local market, but not only your local market, improve your credit, understand utilization ratio, understand how credit cards work. Credit cards is the only debt that has utilization ratio. You don't ever want to go over 30% of your credit card balance. Technically, you don't even ever want to be in credit card debt unless you're like me. I have good credit. I do my main expenditures on one credit card. I get cash back. And I pay the whole bill off. I pay the whole balance before it bills because it's what is ever on the bill that reports to the bureaus. So if you pay after it bills, the bureau will never know you paid it. So you have to pay it before it bills. And then the other thing, savings, brother. Please, for the love of God, people, save your money. And, and what I tell people as, as far as savings, Steve, is you, first you all ha you have to understand the problem. So in order to understand the problem, I use software for myself. I'm sorry I'm long-winded here. Dude, this is what I've been doing for six months. Um, I use a software program called Mint.com. Now, okay. Mint.com, do, do you know what that is? Yep. I love it. So I have all of my accounts linked to this program, every single credit card, every bank account, everything I have. And that allows me to watch every single penny that I spend. Once I was able to see what I was spending on, I was like, oh my God, I spent how many thousands of dollars on food a month? I'm like, I'm like, dude, like you, you're better than this, Travis. Like you, thousands of dollars I was spending on food, did something about it. I also realized like I was almost at a thousand dollars in subscriptions, right? I'm a, I'm a YouTube content creator. I have another channel. I like I have music subscriptions, graphic subscriptions, uh, overlay subscriptions, uh, Adobe. So I cut all of that dude in the last three months. I have knocked out my wife and I $500 a month in subscriptions. Isn't that great? And I'm thinking to myself, like, how did that happen? Right? How did, so, so you save your money. Let me touch on that real quick, yeah. if you don't mind. And I think that that's you made a ton of valid points on across the board. But I think that's one of the bigger like right now. I'm, I'm uh, Travis is doing well, and I, I know you're doing well financially and everything else. Did you need to cut those expenses? No. Okay. So I had a conversation with a good friend of mine the other day, and and he does extremely well. I mean he. Anyway, he's cutting expenses. And I think that, and I know I'm going off, off tangent a little bit on this, but I think that 
everybody, and it doesn't matter if you're poor, yeah. lower middle class, middle class, rich, everybody's cutting back because they're feeling the pinch. So even wealthy people who didn't necessarily grow up wealthy, they understand the value of the dollar. We're all cutting back. I'm personally cutting back, just saying I don't necessarily have to. And that's a contracting economy. And I think that that's where Travis is alluding to is, you know, everybody should be cutting back, putting more money in their pockets and the people who are, you know, just preparing for this downturn. Cause I think it, I mean, you know, you, you could listen to mainstream media and Powell and yelling and, and the, the BS that's coming out of them, but we're, we're going into, I believe some, some tough times and, and it's just, we're getting this real time data. That's why I wanted to pinpoint that yeah. from Travis right now is like, this is real data. This is coming from a guy that financially is doing well, but he still cut, he shaved off $500 a month when he didn't necessarily have to. Yeah. Right? I mean, and, and yeah, man, I mean, anyone can get, like, we're all caught in the rat race. Some, you know, within different levels, right? There's different yeah. levels, but brother, that's what I'm saying, man. You know, the sad thing is, is most Americans, you know, they're, they're doing the same thing, man. And I'm, and, and the thing is, is, is most people aren't making the, the same amount of money as, as, as we're making. And, um, you know, it's a really horrible place to be in. And that's why I'm leaning towards for some home buyers, man, quite frankly, because I feel like the investors, they've, they've been through this rodeo before. Uh, I, I yeah. want to talk to investors as well, but, um, you know, the new, the, the first time home buyers, man, I'm, it, you know, you know, they're so underprepared and so uneducated in, in general, the, of course they're savvy people. Um, it's scary. I believe as a, as an industry, we, we've completely failed the consumer. Um, yeah. but, but I also understand why I believe the industry has failed the professionals as well. There's a lack of training in our industry. And I think, you know, that, um, oh, yeah. because everyone that's does training, Hey, give me deals, right? It's all like a circle, like, Hey, my hands out, please give me a deal. I'm going to do a training. There's nothing pure, you know? So, um, and that brings me to the last thing. So, so you know, save your, it was the, um, you know, credit. So it works, save your money, get another job. Get another job, man. I mean, you know, I looked at these job numbers. I think it's tainted, but but I, I think a lot of that, Steve, is is like part time, part time seasonal jobs. I have three jobs, yeah. brother. I have three jobs and four kids. I'm working like I work till eleven o'clock at night, like four times, four times a week. Get up at seven a.m. Yep. So get another job and understand also that just if you have two jobs, you can't always use it for qualify for qualifying for a mortgage. Generally, if you're going to use two sources of income to get qualified, you have to have a two year history. Uh, and, and there, and there, and there's certain rules there, but nevertheless, that's going to help people. Even if you can't use a second job as qualifying income for a mortgage, because you haven't been there for two years. Um, it doesn't mean it's not going to help. Right. Yep. So, um, you know, those are really the four things I think people need to do. The, the biggest being self-empowerment. And, and also, you know, in terms of getting a job, you know, obviously increasing your income, but don't touch that income. You, you were fine living off of the job that you had. Yeah. Ho hopefully. And you yeah. don't need that money. Then take that money and pay off your credit card debts, pay off your car, like get rid of all the liabilities that you have and start, start fresh. But and it doesn't even have to be a job. Is there something passionate that you're about or, or can you start a YouTube channel or there? There's so many, you know, I think a lot of people can use the excuse that you don't have time. And like Travis is saying, he's like, I got, you know, four five, six, seven different sources of income because I'm, I'm going out there and I'm creating that. Yeah. And uh, it, it's important. It's important. Cause you know, I, I'm a big believer, you know, don't, don't rely on, uh, especially any one employer to, to, pay your bills. I mean, overnight. And, uh, you know, we talked about on uh, a video that we, we did on Travis's um, YouTube channel and everybody should go over there and check it out. But it, it the, the website just showing the amount of uh, layoffs and everything. So you, you don't know, especially in a contracting economy, you don't know small or large business, how stable you are in, in certain positions. So I think it's important, you know, have that side gig and that side gig could turn into something way bigger than, than you ever thought. So, um, go ahead. <laughs> so I, I forgot one really important thing, man, is yeah. to stay encouraged. You know, uh, I, I should, that's actually, I believe being encouraged is actually more important than your local market. I think a lot of people get discouraged because they're constantly saying told no, or you have to do this to get that. So I, I feel like a lot of people are discouraged, man, but you know, 
I just really want to make the point where it just takes a little bit to make a big difference, right? It takes a little bit of getting uncomfortable, a little bit of pain, a little bit of change, just a little bit of change. It goes a really long way, Steve. And that's how like someone like me with a foreclosure bankruptcy repo tax lien, I can get it. You know, I'm back to where I was even better. I'm, I'm about twice as strong as I was back when I lost everything. It doesn't, you know, it takes some self-control, but I mean, you got to make a decision. Once you make a decision, you stay driven, right? Yeah. Just, just keep working on the decision. If, if you want to make money in real estate, if you want to find your primary uh, residence, then make that decision and stay driven towards that goal. And you will, you will get it. You will get it. You know. So I think, you know, I think that I think honestly, that's some of the best advice that we've we've talked about, man. Staying, staying positive. And you know, I had a comment on a a, a video I recently did, and I think the guy said, "Mr. Doom and Gloom," and and it's like, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to be gloomy about what's going on in our economy and and what's what I foresee with housing and and everything else. Um, you know, we're we're just trying to get the word out. But I think something that's important to understand is even if you're in a position right now and you have debt up to your eyeballs and everything else, like Travis said, you you can get Mint on your phone on an app, a free version. And, and download it and just start plugging your information in. It's going to show you where expenditures are going. And now you just started to formulate a plan of how you can start becoming better with money. And then things will start making sense. But if you're just sitting there in your, in your chair and you're sitting there depressed day in and day out, and you're like, you know, I'm, I'm going down this tunnel of indebtedness and, and I'm struggling. Um, you know, that, that's, that can be changed with the right, attitude and the plan. And, uh, I, I think that that's invaluable information, Travis. And it's not easy, Steve, you know, it's not easy, dude. Like when I lost everything, man, that hurt. You yeah. know, that was painful, man. Embarrassing. You know, I got to saw all the people around me that I felt like I was smarter than them. Like at the time I was really, uh, you know, if you would have met me in my twenties, Steve, you would have been like, who the heck is this kid? Right. I was complete. <laughs> completely off the charts. But, you know, I was making $40,000 a month back then. Like I said, um, you know, I have a lot of experience, but, but man, um, you know, um, I'm just, I really worry about people, you know, I really worry about people and, um, just quitting. Right. I, yeah. I, I worry about them giving up. And, you know, the reality is, is like, they're this close and it, and it, and the reality is Steve is not everyone, right. There's some people are, you know, really hurting family health, but you know, there are also some people that just need that little adjustment in their mindset. That's it. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. millions of people, just a slight adjustment in attitude, a slight, in, you know, adjustment, you know, and, and as far as the, you know, and I, I've seen a lot of comments like that, the doom and gloom. And then I've seen it the other way, like, oh, you know, crashers, right? Like, dude, the division is awful, man. The division is awful. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I don't like any of those terms, you know, I, you know, a doom and gloomer in this market is that's a derogatory term that's used for essentially people that are trying to warn homeowners, right? It's, it's yeah. something derogatory people use. I think it's unnecessary. I, you know, you and I have a difference in opinion. I get a lot of those comments from investors like, Oh, you doom and gloomer. You're just selling fear, blah, 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 blah. Well, actually what I'm saying, you know, I'm telling you my story. I'm telling you what happened to me, right? I'm sounding the alarm because I believe it with all my heart and soul. Does it make me a bad person? I don't think so. Right. But I'm also not saying that, you know, anyways, my point is, is man, it, I need to do a better job at keep, keeping us united. <laughs> I man, well, let's talk about that for, for a second. Yeah. I mean, I, I think our values align and the reason why I think we're both on YouTube talking about relatively a lot of the same stuff is because we've been through turmoil yeah. in, in previously. And, you know, I had a short sale, uh, a condo and I, man, I settled like three or four credit cards and I was just, I, mean, I was going out every night. I had a, a high mortgage and, you know, just, but that, that changed me. It, it yeah. literally changed my DNA. And I, I saw things, I saw certain writings on the wall and I was like, man, this is going to be bad. And it was bad. And to think for a second that, the economy doesn't go through cycles and everything just appreciates at ungodly numbers it is, is kind of ignorant in my opinion. And I think that we're just trying to get the word out. Look, let's say everything is fine over the next 10 years, at least you're prepping and you're doing things to stack more money and get a side hustle and better your credit and better yourself as a human being. I think that Travis and I both have the same mentality or 
same outlook that, you know, we don't think things are going to be great. And if we can resonate with a couple of people on our channels or one person on our channels to, to really take a hold of their personal finances and better themselves. then I think we're, we're doing our job. Um, but you know, I think we're speaking from the heart and we're speaking from experience and that's why, that's why I'm doing it. I mean, it's yeah, dude. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not hard to understand, you know, I'm not trying to be a, a bad person, but don't knock me because I'm a, uh, you know, I, I love my content creation, right? I get so much, oh, your thumbnails, your titles, Travis, like, dude, like real estate data reporting is boring, Steve. All right. It's boring. It's slow. You know, I'm a content creator. I have another channel where it's uh, land-based shark fishing. It's all conservation is, is tag and release and, and take a DNA sample. And I'm doing drone shots and transition and like water transitions. So I really love being creative, man. And, and, uh, you know, my, th <laughs> my thumbnails, I always try to tell a certain story. It's, it's completely ridiculous. I get it. But, um, you know, the thing is, man, is, um, I got thick skin. So, you know, I, you know, all those comments, those doomers and dude, I, it, it doesn't matter to me. I already know what the facts are. I already know what, what my life is. You know, my opinions are my opinions because I'm going off of the data. I've seen this show before. I mean, we had a massive bubble formed in half the time as last time, right? Only this was artificially propped up by the stimulus. So I'm like, y'all like, why wouldn't you warn? And a lot of people, Steve, I'm noticing, you know, they, they stay behind the year over year price comparisons. And I'm going to tell you what's wrong with that. And, and these are mostly for, you know, these, these big time high leveraged investors. Traditionally, when we're in a normal housing market, month over month price comparison data is not that handy. OK, a lot of them you know, make that, you know, you, you got to look at year over year because it's like a true comparison, summer, summer, winner's winner, whatever. Right. The only problem is, is that becomes complete garbage, in my opinion, when we're in a transitionary crashing cooling market. Mm -hmm. If you're not able to adjust your outlook and, and you know, looking at the data in, in, into more localized recent terms, you're not going to understand the direction of the house market quite frankly. And a lot of people are also saying, Steve, that no, this is just how it goes this year. Like every June, every July, do I need to pull up the yeah. charts? Do I need to pull, do I need to pull, I, I could pull up so much data, look at it on a 10 year basis. And what happened in the last three years is nothing like normal fundamentals and normal annualized growth. And that's my point with that year over year data. And, and again, it's mostly from, you know, big time investors, but, and I've heard them and I've, and I've heard their things. They're like, you guys, yeah, month over month is the least important, blah, blah. but dude, it's the most important. And again, the reason is we're in a crashing environment. If all you're looking at is year over year data, you can't even have a conversation with me until January, 2023. Right? Yeah. So just don't talk until January 20. You know what I'm saying? So, um, dude, it's just really hard out there, man, for, for these home buyers. They, they, they just, they struggle. Like, who do you believe? And, and I really think that's why you got to look under the hood. You got to look under the hood. Like, why are the people are that, you know, saying what they're saying? Are they trying to sell me something? And I'm not knocking people that sell something. Okay. Yeah. Sell shirts, sell a mug. I don't care. But what I'm saying is, is, is people need to do a little bit, a little bit better job at, at, at looking under the hood on why people are saying what they're saying. So I, I want to end on this because I, I kind of had a debate with somebody and I asked them this question. And I, and I, I for, for the life of me, can't find a good answer. But, uh, you know, this person was kind of saying how we're not going into any kind of recession and all that kind of stuff. Can Travis, can you name one thing? And I, I hate to kind of put like a negative twist to this, but I'm looking for it. I'm mm -hmm. looking for positivity. Mm -hmm. Can you name one thing that's going on in the United States in our economy or even politically, but primarily our economy that is a po is moving toward a positive route across the board. Um, that would that would it be indicators of like our economy is going in the right direction, the positive direction, the healthy direction. Well, I think that the positive right now, Steve, is the tightening. Right. I think, you know, I think that's, I think that's, a, I think that's a positive. I think a recession is a positive thing. Great so, um, you know, I, I think there are positive things. I don't think we're in a positive market yet, but you know, w w to be honest, what the federal reserve is doing is working. 
You know, yeah. my gripe with them is they sh they're they late. They should have done it in 2021 when we were out of COVID, uh, but they kept on with the stimulus. More laws were passed and the, the you know, the, the buck was passed. So I, I see what the, the Federal Reserve is doing is positive. Um, I wish there was more confidence in what they're saying and more tr uh, transparency, more direction, you know, because they're all over the place, dude. But, but I see that as good, Steve. And then you know what else I see is good, man. Um, I see sources like YouTube is, is, is so good. It's so good, man. The, the fact that we can go now on the internet, right? Cause I, I remember AOL. Do you remember we couldn't even go online because it was busy. Remember that? Um, dude, the, the amount of empowerment, the amount of education, the amount of opinions people can get now is beautiful. I learned so I learned my entire cinematography skills and I have some skills, bro. I don't know if you've watched my other channel. Uh, I learned it all from, uh, Awesome. Did you, did you like it? Did you like some of the yeah, stuff? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Um, I'll make sure I link that to your other channel. I mean, this, this dude's catching some, some big sharks. Let, and it's all release. It's all tagging conservation. People are like, let him be. You're killing. I'm like, I'm not killing them. If anyone's helping the shark population, it's me. You're the person that's whining about it. I'm doing something about it. But, um, dude, you know, I think the ability to empower in this day and age is absolutely remarkable. But where I'm disappointed is, is people is initiative. Yeah. So, so on one hand, we have this amazing platform on YouTube where you can get many opinions. You can look at investor opinions, but understand the, where the opinions are coming from. Um, but everything else is a complete catastrophe and I'm, I'm super embarrassed uh, by it. Maybe, maybe we can uh, do maybe even a couple or a handful of videos, maybe another one where you and I can come together and just start talking different ways that people can start improving their lives, whether it's a different types of side hustles and what you can do to start yeah. or something like that. So if, if you guys are watching right now, you want to see something like that, drop that in the comments below. And uh, Travis, man, I appreciate it once again. Awesome. Awesome talking to you as always. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, if you haven't checked out Travis's YouTube channels, I will link both of them below once pertaining to real estate and all the data you're going to need to know for an informed decision, whether you're investing or buying real estate as a primary residence. And then uh, check out some of these big fish he's catching. <laughs> Steve, Thanks it's all, always an absolute honor, brother. Anytime, man, I, I'd absolutely love to just have a conversation with you, man. So, so keep doing what you're doing, brother. And I appreciate yeah. it once again. Oh.